الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين وبعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته uh, After so much thought um, I have decided to go back to our original series which we started last year and that was uh, a thematic commentary on the Quran sorry a thematic commentary on the Quran and I think we, we've come a good way. I mean, we reached the beginning of Surah An-Nisa and um, I really found this to be a very, uh, found it to be a very enriching experience and very profound topic. And it also allowed us to talk about so many things, so many things within the context of every Surah. And uh, one opportunity I really appreciated with, with this approach was that we could relate the Quran to so many practical aspects of our lives. So I uh, really, after after serious consideration, I found myself more comfortable, you know, picking up where we left off with this series, uh, and I also found it to be a bit more beneficial. So, inshallah, what I'm going to give you this Friday, inshallah. So for the Friday halqa, we're going to go back to a thematic commentary on the Quran. What I'm going to share with you today uh, will be basically some sort of uh, a refresher to, just to get you back on track with the with the with the class or the halaqa and uh, also to so I'll, i won't make it long as well i will make it a little bit short so that it just serves as um, a refresher rather than a, a proper kind of start again and uh, just to recap and uh, put you uh, all back in sync when it comes to this uh, the approach we took to the quran was basically that we would pick up um, the main theme in every surah. We would study a surah and check what, what's the main theme, what's the central theme that really sort of um, weaves the whole surah together and unites everything that is mentioned in it. So we find every other topic and every subject matter that is dealt with in the surah really ultimately feeds into this central theme. And this is a profound way to approach the Quran because uh, the human mind naturally looks for this kind of unity of themes. We assume that since all of these subject matters are treated under one title, that there is something that unifies them. There is something that binds them together. And this is, this is part of our fitra. This is part of our mental fitra, I would say, our natural, the natural way our minds think. Why? Because we, we love to connect the dots. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks to us in a way that is um, optimal when it comes to, to our understanding and addressing our nature. Uh, so we would take the central theme in every surah and sort of show how it unfolds in every part of the surah. Sometimes we would go into the sub-themes, sometimes a few levels down the hierarchy. Uh, and some, sometimes we just go one level below, which is the sub-theme itself and then move on depending on you know how much uh, benefit and how how much i would say uh, relevant we could make our discussion to our present times and i believe last time we reached uh, verse number 40 or 43 and i said at that time that inshallah we will move on to the next part and our our style was taking about five pages every friday every halaqa we take five pages Inshallah, from, uh, we sort of comment on them and show how they connect to each other and how they, they lead ultimately to the central theme. And again, I want to uh, remind you that the central theme that we found out in Surah An-Nisa was displayed clearly in the first verse of Surah An-Nisa, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala emphasizes the concept of family and bond at different levels. So there is the family as we know it, which is like uh, parents and their children. And there is also the concept of the Muslim family in the sense of the Muslim community being a family, being brothers to one another. And also the human family, where we all humans are actually part of the same family because we come from the same parents, the same father and mother, Adam and Hawa or Adam and Eve. And uh, then the surah actually, uh, that's the central theme. So the central theme is is emphasizing the concept of family that we humans are the same that we are connected to one another at different levels of this family dif different levels of conception but Allah subhanahu wa puts that in context that our existence and this connection that we have 
is not just random. It didn't just, it's not arbitrary in the sense it just happened to be. But all of that is done, is actually, uh, is put in place for the sake of fulfilling one purpose, which is worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. Because ultimately we are on a journey to Allah and uh, we are supposed to make it safe back to our source of being and uh, on the day of judgment. And uh, a great part of this journey and a great, I would say, resource that we have in this journey is the fact that we are connected. So we can actually, we can be a source of help and support to one another. But we can also be a source of test for one another. So Allah SWT in the surah addresses the different levels of the concept of family and addresses different rulings. So sometimes you will find the laws of inheritance, which applies to the family in the, the nucleus family, in the sense that we know it. And uh, then you will find laws about that pertain to marriage and, and, and divorce. Um, there are some other smaller sub themes that are mentioned sometimes in their in their in their uh, uh, perfect I would say perfect uh, location uh, in the surah, and uh, then we came to the point where Allah Subhanahu wa Taala here at verse number forty four Allah starts talking about the people of the scripture. Allah has a reference here to the people of the scripture, and why? Because again, this is part. This is the level of the. Uh, human family that humanity is a family and there are members of this family who are not behaving well or have not behaved well or maybe some of them have not behaved well so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala highlights this to show that to show us where they went wrong and show us how we can benefit from them, their experience but these verses also serve as as an admonition and a reminder to the people of the scripture to take heed of the truth regardless where it comes from and maybe it would be a source of a, it would be a reason for some of them to actually revisit their connection with God or with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, so in verse number 44 and by the way inshallah in future episodes I will try to uh, actually introduce some slides into the video so you are able to see the text and you are able to see how we proceed through the text you will be able to see the translation as well so inshallah I'll try to incorporate this just as we first start for those who started with us at the beginning of the series we actually had this but inshallah uh, hopefully I'll be able inshallah to introduce it back to the videos since we are pre-recording these videos so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here says أَلَمْ تَرَى إِلَى الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا نَصِيبًا مِنَ الْكِتَابِ يَشْتَرُونَ الضَّلَالَةَ وَيُرِيدُونَ أَن تَضِلُّ السَّبِيلِ don't you see to those people who have been given a share of this scripture they actually purchase misguidance and they want you to lose the way. They, they want you to go astray. Wallahu a'lamu bi a'da'ikum wa kafa billahi waliyan wa kafa billahi nasira. And Allah is aware, Allah is well aware of your enemies. And Allah is sufficient as a protector, as a guardian, and as a supporter. Then Allah says, Mina alladina hadu yuharrifuna al kalima an mawadi'ihi wa yakuluna sami'na wa asayna wa asma'a ghayra musma'in wa ra'ina layyan bi al-sinatihim wa ta'nam fi al-deen walau annahum qalu sami'na wa ata'na wa asma'a wa nzurna lakana khayran lahum wa akwam walakin la'anahum allahu bi kufrihim fala yu'minuna illa qalila Allah says from the people who have from the from the Jews at that time previously those again who were before Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Allah is referring to them here in these verses um, some of those people they have changed the words the divine words the words of the scripture either change them literally meaning changing the words like exchanging a word for another one or change the meanings change the interpretation and these people, when they are commanded or when their command comes to them from Allah, they say, we hear and we disobey. And they play on words when it comes to something like this. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, had those people said, we hear and we obey, and that actually they, they acted obediently, uh, it would have been better for them. But they have chosen disbelief. Thus, they don't actually take heed and they don't. They, they, it's very little that you find these people actually believe truly truly believe uh, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses them with some of their mistakes and some of their faults and just like we said in Surah Al-Baqarah 
The reason Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the people of the scripture is that first it's an admonition for them and a reminder, but it also first and foremost it's a reminder for those people who decided to follow the truth that came with Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam that these people that we learn and we take lessons. We don't have to repeat the same mistakes because the mistakes that they fell into again were by virtue of them being humans and we are tempted to actually follow the same example. So by learning from their mistakes, we don't have to go through the same mistakes to learn from them. That's pretty much, that, that's a main theme why uh, reference to the people of the scripture is mentioned throughout, uh, throughout the Quran. But it also, as we said, it serves as a reminder. And also in the context of Surah An-Nisa, if we want to take it at the level of the family, the family of humanity, uh, those who have uh, in principle responded, responded positively to the messengers of Allah who have accepted revelation, not all of them stayed true to it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is highlighting how some people who initially accepted the revelation, how they went astray and how they left the path and, and, and lost direction. And it's not like they were so innocent to the point that they lost the truth, but actually this was the outcomes of their own choices and their own actions. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala highlights something here that is very important. This is verse number 48 in Surah An-Nisa. That Allah does not forgive the association of partners with him. Allah does not forgive shirk. Allah does not give that you give rivals and, and companions to him or people who share his divinity or people who share his right of worship. Allah does not accept that. So any form of shirk, like real major shirk, Allah does not forgive it. Allah does not forgive it. But Allah forgives other sins. Now, does that mean if a person committed shirk but then they repented sincerely, does that mean Allah does not forgive them? Allah does forgive that. But what Allah is saying here is that if a person commits shirk and they don't repent and they don't recant and they don't do not fix it, then Allah will not forgive it for them because other sins even sometimes major sins. If the person fixes their ways and they don't make a specific tawbah, because there is tawbah is, is different types. So there is a general tawbah. Yeah, you make a general tawbah, you, 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 you return to Allah. You sort of turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in general. You don't specify any of your past sins and sort of repent from them specifically. This is a general tawbah. And it could actually lead to forgiveness of all of your sins, depending on the level of sincerity. But there is a higher level of tawbah which is specific that if you commit a sin and then you repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of each one of those sins, it makes it more likely for your sins to be forgiven because this is a higher level of devotion and a higher level of tawbah and it shows attention to details. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this verse, he's talking about the general tawbah because some people sometimes just you know, turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in repentance without specifying or without going back to each sin that they have done and try to undo it. Allah says that Allah forgives and most likely He will forgive the sins, those sins. But when it comes to shirk, you have to repent from it sincerely, completely meeting all the conditions of tawbah specifically. That's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is saying here. Again, so I'm not going to just... Uh, talk in details about how Allah speaks about those people of the scripture, but Allah highlights that they had jealousy, envy towards the believers, why they have the revelation, why they received it, why they're able to follow it, why not us? Again, they took the whole concept of devotion to Allah, which is supposed to have selflessness. It is supposed to have complete unbias. They took it as a matter to serve their ego. And, and this is something that humans are susceptible to. I mean, and this is, uh, I, I believe it was Sufyan al-Thawri, rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, Inna lil-ilmi tughyanan katughyan al-mal, that knowledge gives a sense of arrogance and a big ego, just like money and status do. Uh, you could be upon the truth, and this could make you arrogant, by the way. You could be following the truth, but it makes you arrogant. So, and in your arrogance, you're not following the truth. So you are generally following the truth, but if you grow arrogant because of that, you are sort of 
departing from the truth in that particular area and that's that's no small thing this is this is a really huge issue um, so humans could use good things for a bad end this is something unique about humans we're able to use the truth to tyrannize others we're able to use the truth to gain a, a name and, rep and a reputation we could use the truth to sort of uh, make a i would say a wealth out of it uh, we could save the truth to serve our ego so that's that's problematic allah is referring to some of the people of the scripture that this is what they did they wanted the truth to be particular to them like uh, to be uh, monopolized by them or at least prophethood monopolized among them so that all other nations all people all ethnicities just become their followers and this is why they have envy and uh, or they had envy and jealousy towards the believers and they they actually stated that you know shirk is better than the religion of muhammad it is these are some of the jewish tribes in medina and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says actually allah states that these people am nasa ala ma atahum Allahum min fadlah. Do, do they just feel jealous about the fact that allah had bestowed his blessings upon the believers upon the prophet sallallahu and his and his companions allah says we gave uh, the family of Ibrahim alayhi salam al kitab al hikmah the book and wisdom the scripture and wisdom and we have given them such a great dominion Allah says some of them this is the family of Ibrahim the descendants of Ibrahim alayhi salam some of them believed in it and some of them opposed it so again it's not about whether you can trace back your ancestry to Ibrahim alayhi salam or to Ishaq alayhi salam or to Ismail alayhi salam or whether your parents were religious or righteous etc it's not about this it's about how do you perform how sincere are you in your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah ultimately sort of settles this whole issue by saying in verse number uh, 56 and 57 those indeed those who have disbelieved in our signs and in our uh, words we shall uh, put them in the fire where every time their skin sort of burns and becomes right every time their, their skins burn we give them fresh skin so that they taste the chastisement and the punishment indeed Allah is almighty and all wise and those who have believed and performed righteous deeds we shall enter them into gardens under which uh, rivers flow and they will live there forever eternally they will have pure spouses and we shall uh, make them enter into shades of 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 bliss in in paradise so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala settles this affair in this way how does this connect again to the central theme in surat and nisa which is the, we said the concept of family and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala organized humans around families. It could be again the nuclear family, it could be the extended family, it could be the tribe at a higher level or more a wider level, or it could be a community like a Muslim community for example, or it could be um, humanity in general. All of those are levels for humanity. The reason Allah organized us in this way is that to help us and facilitate for us the worship of Allah, the fulfillment of the purpose of our creation, which is devotion to Allah, obedience to Allah, worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So how does this connect? Allah here basically highlights how one segment of this human family who had actually received true revelation, how they abused it, how they changed it, how they followed the changed word of Allah and how uh, this led to their corruption where they became envious, jealous, uh, not necessarily 
aligning themselves with the truth uh, and they would actually give a testimony for falsehood and for shirk and polytheism uh, against Islam which is the truth which is actually the same message that they that their messengers and prophets received from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, so this is something that again it so, 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 sort of instruct us, instructs us how we deal with those people first and foremost we take lessons we take lessons from their example uh, so and we avoid falling in the same mistakes and we realize the weaknesses they had we have them as well we are susceptible to the same issues that they suffered from and if we are not on our guards we could easily slip into that and uh, it happens unnoticeably it, it happens without us realizing we're doing it it's so conniving it is so subtle that we didn't we don't actually realize that we are doing it we don't realize it's happening this is why it is extremely um, important for us to keep ourselves in check all the time uh, keep our our evil tendencies in check keep our ego in check and make sure we are fulfilling the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala internally and externally and finally Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we said he said settles the affairs and he shows all of these disputes among you segments of the human family will be disputed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when everyone will ultimately receive the due reward of their the due reward of their deeds in this life of their performance in this life uh, I really want to sort of stop here at this moment because I don't want to and again, as I said, I'm trying to refresh your minds and get you back, inshallah, on track when it comes um, uh, up to speed with uh, with our previous uh, halakas on this topic. And I hope, inshallah, we will be able to pick up again, pick up the same speed and be able to go over this and make it, inshallah, a beneficial uh, halaqa. Um, I will probably figure out, yeah, inshallah. And as I said, inshallah, I will try to incorporate uh, the slides and uh, uh, into the text and the translation the text of the Quran that we're dealing with and the translation and maybe some of the benefits be uh, ta'ala so inshallah looking forward to seeing you next Friday with the halaqa uh, and it will be about an hour before Maghrib about an hour before Salat al-Maghrib bi idhnillahi ta'ala jazakumullahu khayran wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh